Good day and welcome back to the Super Data Science YouTube channel. Today we are looking at the slope chart and building it in Tableau. Now a slope chart is just basically a variation of the line chart and is excellent at portraying comparison trends between two or more values in a dimension across two discrete dates or time periods. Today we will learn how to create a basic slope chart using two values from a dimension and comparing it across two data periods. Let's have a look at the data that we'll be working with today. The file we're working with today is called the GDP per capita. This information has been obtained from the World Bank uh, website. This is just an extract of that data set. Uh, what we've got here is basically the GDP per capita of two regions, Europe and Central Asia. And we've got it for, um, it's for a couple of time periods between 1960 and 2016 every eight years, so values for every eight years. If you want the full data set, you can have a look at worldbank.org. All right, let's start off with Tableau. It will just connect to the Excel file and it's open. Nothing strange about this. We will, however, pivot this data. So we, don't, we want them all into um, into one dimension in essence. So we'll just use pivot and change this to year. And also let's just change the data type as well to year. And the values is GDP per capita. All right. So now we will just go into the sheet and start creating this. Now it's really simple. Um, as I mentioned, it's similar to a line chart. So we'll just be taking the year, make sure it's discrete. So it's a blue pool and you can just check it there as well. We want discrete years, but we also only want to compare two years. So let's just select the years to compare and we'll just select 2008 and 2016 to compare on. Now we will add the GDP per capita to the rows and that creates, and that just makes some more space and that gives us one line chart. We'll add, we obviously only have it as one and therefore we'll need to put region into detail which will break up the line. So you can see the top line is North America and the bottom Europe and Central Asia. And that in essence is your slope chart. How easy was that? Obviously we're not done. We need to put in the shading and add some formatting to that. To add the shading is not straightforward, but it's not difficult at all. We'll just create two calculated fields and we'll just call this GDP EU and it's a GDP per capita, but for the EU and we'll just put an if statement because we need to create two different uh, measures here, one for the EU and uh, Central Asia, as well as one for North America that we'll need to use in, a, in an area chart. But you'll see in a second how we do this. So we'll just take uh, if region is equal to, and this you now we just need to type out the first region and the first region is Europe, uh, it's an ampersand and Central Asia. All right. So if the region is equal to that, then we need to do something. What are we doing? We are basically just outputting GDP per capita and we're ending it. So in essence, we just want the GDP EU to have the values for that region. And we're just gonna make a copy, it's okay, and apply. Actually, I'm just gonna duplicate this one and we'll just call this NA for North America. And I'll just edit this and I'll just edit the text so we don't have to redo too many steps. So we'll make this North America. All right. So, and then hit apply and okay. Now we can simply take the GDP per capita for EU, put it into rows and we'll create us a second chart at the bottom there and then do the same for North America. But we won't put it into rows. We will actually put it into this chart there. So right to the left of the, well, not right to the left, but <laughs> to the left of the, um, the GDP EU chart. And then you'll see it obviously comes up with a, a for a container there called measures and it adds some measure colors but in essence the chart looks exactly the same as the as the top and then we'll just take this as a dual axis chart always remember to synchronize your axis when you're creating a dual axis chart and now we've got all the information it's just on top of each other it hasn't disappeared it's just because we have the same values and here's when we still we will start changing this now we said we want to have an area map there we go. And at this time, we'll also just remove region from the uh, detail tab. All right, now what we can see is that um, it's obviously overshooting a little bit and we've got some information at the bottom there because it's an area chart. We can simply swap these two around. So we'll put North America at the top and you can see now we've got the blue part here, which we can actually just manipulate. So I am actually just gonna do it there. Double click on the color, double click on the color there, change it to white and look what happens if I hit okay and apply. 
immediately we've got this section at the, the shading at well at least looks much better here we've got the, the white part at the bottom there all right so what's left at the top why is it overshooting like that well it's because we've got this bottom part here so it's not too difficult to do that we'll just simply and i'll just edit it within this shelf over there just double click and then we'll give you the um, ability to edit this and i will simply subtract the sum of gdp for your well, europe and central asia so eu and as simple as that it deducts or it, it subtracts the, so, the the extra part over there and it fits in exactly to what we had there perfect so our chart is starting to look great all right so we'll do some formatting now quickly we'll just hide some of the headers we don't need to see all of these headers i actually just want to change the um oh, let's just right click there change some things on the chart as well so we'll firstly take away the um the grid lines we don't want the grid lines and we also don't want any of the borders so we just hit none on all of them let's quickly update that as well while we're here we want to obviously increase the size to let's make it 11 and bold so it's nice and clear we don't want to see the year there that's quite obvious what it is so let's hide that and the title we will simply call gdp per capita comparison quite easy name and that oh let's actually just make this bold and to just stand out a little bit now this looks great and yes we've done some of the formatting but we need to do more now firstly let's change up the, some of the colors so what we'll firstly do is in so now that we've got two well multiple ways to um or separate charts that we can manipulate i want to do the line chart first and because i want to change the colors and make the regions um distinguishable all right so we'll just remove that there and put a region on to color be careful it's on the line chart not the area chart and I'll just bring that across because I want to edit that. Um, and what you'll see now is we don't see the colors properly. That's because the area chart is in front of the line chart. So if I swap these two around like this, you'll see now we have the proper coloring as we want. And um, uh, also for the for the line chart, and this is the obviously the color for the line chart. I'm just going to make this a gray because we don't need to be that shocking orange. And back to the line chart, I want to increase the size so the line is a bit thicker. And at the same time, also add markers so we can see the start and end. Yeah, that looks great. Now we can just simply take the GDP per capita and put that onto label. And obviously, we'll just format this also. We firstly, we will put this as currency and we'll make it one decimal and add the thousands. And second to that, also, we will say 11 and bold. And that's pretty clear what the differences are to make this easier for our audience to interpret that the, that the gap between the two in 2008 was, is, was smaller than the gap in 2016 we will just add some uh, annotation so firstly i think let's add the names of the regions because it's not easy for them to see it in the tooltip so i'll just make this an 11 and you can just make it quite intuitive and use the right coloring from the lines also so obviously we need to format that, take away the shading, take away the line, make it look like a normal little text box that you've added on there. So let's do that. And we'll do exactly the same here for our, um, well, our region. Sorry, not like that. We will uh, annotate and say the area and we'll call this Europe and, and actually let's use the same as we had for the um, values in the data. So Europe and Central Asia. Let me just type that correctly and we'll make it bold 11 and uh, 11 and then we obviously want to make it blue because the line was blue and again we'll change the shading and change the line and the shape there we go so much better now we obviously want to put some text also here um, as additional um, you know, nice way for our audience to interpret this so i will simply add another annotation here and make it an area now i have quickly created this already a little text here i don't have to sit and type it again but basically saying that um, the gdp per capita between north america and europe and central asia so the gap between these two has grown from 21.8 million uh, sorry 21.8 thousand as you can see there between this, the difference between those two in 2008 to 33.9 thousand in 2016 which is the difference between those two so we can just also make this look a bit better make it bold make it orange for north america and for europe and central asia let's make it blue and bold and we'll just bold the values as well just to make it stand out a bit more also 
And lastly, we will just format this once again, take the shading off, take the line off, and make it a bit bigger to fit in there. And there we are. Okay, obviously you can just increase it also again, just to not overlap. And do remember, you can have additional um, regions in here. So if you do have additional regions, you can show them on there. You don't have to show the gap only between the two. But this is a very nice way to portray the message. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you will be trying this on your own data as well. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got some more excellent content coming up. And until we meet next time again, happy analyzing.